Now, I've been addressing not just the nation, but many nations uh, since uh, 7 o'clock. But at 8 o'clock, Boris Johnson addressed this nation. Let's find out what he said and whether anyone actually believed it. My RT colleague and friend Shadia Edwards Dashti was listening for us on the mother of all talk shows and she joins me. Now Shadia, thank you for doing this. We didn't expect to uh, work you on a, on a Sunday night, but uh, Boris uh, surprised us all uh, with this impromptu address to the nation. Uh, what did he say? Oh, what did he say? What did he not say? Same old slogan, same old story, really, is what we heard from Boris Johnson just a few minutes ago. Same key buzzwords, you know, things like it's an emergency situation. We are in a critical, urgent time. There's a tidal wave of Omicron coming. But the real tidal wave is how bad is British politics now? Because nobody can believe a word that Boris Johnson says anymore. Yes, we all know that we're in a really dire situation when it comes to the pandemic. Pandemic. We've all been living in it for the last two years. So we know this loud and clear. But everything that he was saying was nothing really new. He was saying how bad it is and get boosted now. That was his uh, main slogan, the main takeaway today. But while uh, Boris Johnson was talking, I do think it's important to say this, at the very same time, t trending on Twitter was nation switch off. That was basically people on Twitter saying switch off the TV, don't listen to Boris Johnson because quite frankly the public just don't want to hear from him anymore. I think that's uh, unfortunately perhaps uh, absolutely true. Uh, there's, there's two questions immediately arise. Let me deal with the most banal. Uh, get boosted now. I've been trying to get boosted for some weeks but I've not yet been able to and I'm as you know over 50. Uh, uh, so uh, he's promised, I'm told, that everyone will be offered a booster, every adult, every adult, not just people over 50 like me, by the end of the year, which is actually very soon. Uh, how credible a promise is that? So what we're hearing from Boris Johnson today is anybody over the age of 18 will be boosted by the end of January next ah. year. Now, ah. that is pretty much an impossible situation considering everything that we've seen over the last two years almost now. All of these uh, promises, these deadlines, you know, think back to the time of the track and trace situation. Think back to the time that everyone, one million people will be uh, vaccinated and one million people will be tested. All of these promises and under delivering. So you can say any adult will be uh, vaccinated, have their third uh, jab, their booster jab by this certain XYZ date, but really, can the government deliver on any of that? So when we hear this sort of thing from Boris Johnson, quite frankly, this amount of time into the pandemic, people are just thinking, "What are you? why are you coming on my television on a Sunday evening to tell me this, when every single time you've come on my television, you haven't ever delivered what you said you were going to do? The second thing that arises is this. It's a bit more problematic. Did he address the fact uh, that the woman that discovered Omicron attests that it is less deadly, she says far less deadly, uh, than the Delta variant, which was uh, hitherto uh, dominant. And that she thinks that Britain has panicked entirely unnecessarily. I'll tell you my problem, Shadia. Words like tidal wave. Uh, mm. or in Nicola Sturgeon's case, a tsunami. Uh, these are words that are deliberately used to panic people when many authorities attest that actually there's nothing to panic about. Of course, it would be better not to get the Omicron, but it turns out it might be better to get the Omicron than to get the Delta. Did he deal with that? No, he didn't speak about anything like that. And he always says, let's go to Chris Whitty, who will talk through the slides. Boris Johnson wants to do the rhetoric and the slogan, then he moves shifting responsibility elsewhere to talk about the real situation. We have many, many scientists saying it's not as deadly as so-and-so and, so and XYZ. Science aside, I'm not a scientist, 
I don't know the answer to that. But what my problem is, if you as the prime minister are going to say this is a tidal wave, a tsunami of a situation, then why on earth are you going to a Christmas party at the heights of this said tsunami? Why are you hosting pub quizzes? This isn't just one slip up or two. There are a handful now of allegations of Christmas parties or gatherings, or let's call it a business meeting, where Boris Johnson and his chums are breaking the rules that they set in stone. So, whether it's a tidal wave or not, I'm not sure. I have no idea about the absolute science. But what we're seeing is that the science behind it is sort of really being challenged on all corners of the globe. And so that's one thing, whether or not what they're saying is true. But the other issue is if it is true, and even if they think it's true, then why aren't they going with the rules themselves? Sure. I mean, even the new plan B uh, we're supposed to work from home, but go up the West End uh, at the weekend and, and party. Uh, we're told by Boris Johnson's government, not in Scotland, uh, that the Christmas parties should go ahead. Well, if it's a tsunami, a tidal wave headed our way, uh, these decisions that they're making don't quite square with that. No. No, they really do not square with that at all. Quite frankly, I was actually expecting a larger announcement than it was this evening. I thought Boris Johnson was actually going to move towards more of a lockdown situation because we're hearing all of this fear-mongering, scare-mongering kind of slogans of tidal wave, tsunami, urgent, emergency, keep your loved ones safe, we've got to protect the NHS, you name it, we've heard it. So I was expecting a bit more. So things aren't really adding up at the same time, and it's very difficult for the public to sort of get on board with Boris Johnson's bipolar personality in terms of his uh, political rhetoric. Because if we look back to last year, one minute was eat out to help out, go go to work, but don't get on the tube, get the public transport, but or go and get in your car rather than get the public transport, but we're putting congestion charge up. This is a really impossible situation for people to get their head around. And it's so difficult, not only for people to abide, but quite frankly, what you're probably going to see is people are just going to say, I I'm not doing it. I'm actually not doing it. Well, thank you for watching it, Shadia. So I didn't have to. Uh, it's very kind <laughs> of you, Shadia Edwards-Dashti, my colleague on RT.